Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be explaining inline six-cylinder engines. Now inline six-cylinder engines are pretty popular um, and we're going to go into the reasons uh, as to why that is. Um, some of the famous engines out there like the 2JZ and the Toyota Supra um, as well as BMW uh, uses inline sixes in quite a bit of their product range. Um, so why would you use inline six-cylinder? So here we've got our inline six. It's just six cylinders all in a row. Uh, the firing order, a typical one would be one, five, three, six, two, four, um, and that's just balance everything out. So you're going to be firing every uh, 120 degrees. So uh, what this is going to look like is basically you're going to have a mirror image of your first three cylinders uh, as the last three cylinders. So the first and the second are going to move, or the first and the last are going to move together. Uh, the second and the fifth are going to move together, and then the third and the fourth are going to move together. So as, as far as their up and down motion. So uh, the reason you do this is to balance out all of the forces uh, and the firing order. So what it looks like, um, if you've watched my videos on engine balance, um, you know all about these primary and secondary forces. Uh, but basically what we've got going on is this uh, one and six in this scenario, we're going to have them at top dead center. And then the rest of our cylinders are going to be 120 degrees. So these are really all in line. Uh, the only reason I staggered them a little bit was to show that these two move together and these two move together. But these are going to be, two and five are going to be... Um, 120 degrees before top dead center. So if you're looking at it kind of at the crankshaft, you're going to have two and five here. They're about to rotate up. Um, and then three and four are going to be 120 degrees after top dead center. So they're going to be over here uh, about to rotate around. So what we've got going on is your primary force is going to be at its largest point uh, for one and six. And then for the rest of your cylinders, it's going to be at half of that uh, on its way down. So your primary forces, when you sum all those up, you've got primary uh, minus four half primaries, that gives you negative one, and then plus one more, so that gives you zero. So all the sum of all of your forces is equal to zero. And the same thing happens with the secondary forces, and that's why these inline six cylinders are so popular um, and, and well balanced. So basically what we've got is uh, your secondary forces on these one and six cylinders is going to be full in the upward direction, um, and it's going to be about half of that downward for all the rest of the cylinders. So when you add that up, it's going to equal to zero. So uh, a better way of kind of understanding why that is, is you can see this triangle here where we've split up, and this is what the crankshaft's going to look like. So you're going to have your one and six cylinders, so they're at their top point here, uh, the three and four over here, and the two and five, and these are all split by 120 degrees. So you can see these forces, as this rotates, they're always going to be canceling each other out so that it's not going to have any vibration at all. And these secondary forces are going to be doing the same thing. So you can kind of think of them as rotating with this crankshaft, uh, the forces, and they're always going to be balancing each other out. Um, and so these uh, in red secondary forces, of course, happen twice per crank revolution. So this is going to be rotating twice as fast. But the big thing you want to understand here is that all of the forces are going to balance out. And that's the huge advantage of an inline six. So advantages, inherently balanced, the primary and secondary cancel out. So this gives you a very smooth engine with very minimal vibration. Um, the other thing is this is, has a low manufacturing cost when compared to V engines because it's just a single block, uh, single straightforward um, setup. And so it's fairly cheap uh, to make versus a V style engine. Uh, simple design, you're only going to have a single head, a uh, single valve train, um, so that also means it's going to be a little bit easier to work on uh, versus having two heads uh, and two valve trains. So, some of the disadvantages, of course there have to be some. Well, it's huge, it's a very long engine, um, and so by having this engine so long, the packaging is a bit difficult, so if you're trying to fit it into a fairly small engine bay, you're going to have some trouble. Um, and also, it's not going to be used for front-wheel drive vehicles very often because you want to have this sideways and then you don't have any space to hook up your transmission and uh, your axles. So the other problem with this inline six is a high center of gravity uh, versus like a flat engine. Um, and then one of the big disadvantages versus a V-style engine is the rigidity. So it's this very long uh, system that doesn't have the rigidity of a very compact V-engine where you've got a more concentrated mass all in a more uniform uh, you know, pattern of, of its shape versus this is a very long stretched out, you know, could torque and twist uh, with the body. So it's not as rigid as a V-style engine. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.